Americans hate station wagons. Back in the 70s and 80s, these things were everywhere, but kids got so miserable riding in the back of their family's wood-covered wagon that they devoted their entire lives to never buying them ever again as adults. So much so that the segment has almost basically disappeared. There are a few companies out there that have tried to convince Americans to buy wagons again, some more successfully than others, by lifting them up a little bit and making them look more like an SUV or a crossover. The Subaru Outback is probably Probably the best edition of that. People don't even know it's a wagon. They just think it's an SUV. And then you have the European companies like Audi, Mercedes, and Volvo. So Volvo sells the V60 Cross Country and the V90 Cross Country, which are lifted a little bit. But now their one and only regular wagon, the V90 is no longer available in the US, is this. This is the V60 Polestar engineered. You used to be able to get a regular V60, but now all you're going to be able to get in the United States is this performance version, which is really, really cool if you are a wagon enthusiast. We're going to go over what is a Volvo V60 Polestar engineered, where it stacks up in the greater wagon segment, and whether or not you should choose this over a fast crossover. All right, so let's start with an exterior walk around of the V60 Polestar engineered. So let's first talk about what is a V60. So a V60 is a compact wagon. So this would compete against the BMW 3 Series wagon, which is not sold here. It's heavily related to the Volvo S60, which is a compact sedan, which more closely competes against the 3 Series sedan. You've got the gorgeous Thor's hammer headlights. I absolutely love Volvo's latest design language. They haven't changed it that much in recent years, but I honestly don't think it's really been in need of a refresh because it still looks modern even a few years later. Now, this one you're going to be able to tell is a Polestar engineered because you get this cool little white badge here in the grill that says as much. You just have your normal Volvo badge as well. And then you have lots of black accents here, a blacked out grill for the Polestar engineered model. This one was sent to us wearing a shade of black paint. Unfortunately, even though this is supposed to be the cool Volvo model, they really didn't offer it in any cool colors. You can only get black, white, silver, and gray. So <laughs> not very colorful options there. Come on, Volvo. What are you doing with that? But at least you do get some really gorgeous 19-inch wheels. They kept it small. I'm glad they didn't go for 20s or 21s. Keep the ride really nice, but the wheels look really nice. You also get these really cool gold uh, brake calipers that say Polestar Engineered as well. You get those on all of the Polestar Engineered models. These are Brembo brakes as well. You can't see where the spoke is, but that is the little Brembo logo as well. You even get little gold uh, tire stems as well. Now we'll talk about it a little bit later, but here is going to be your charge door where you can charge up the V60 Polestar Engineered because this might be the performance wagon, but it is also a plug-in hybrid, which is really cool. I love the overall size because uh, the only other wagons that are still on sale in the U.S. are things like the Audi A6 All-Road. You can get the Mercedes E-Class All-Terrain. Not only are those lifted, but those are considered mid-size wagons. So that would compete against the Volvo V90 Cross Country, which is another mid-size wagon. So definitely a lot longer than this. I'm loving the compact size because you have that small footprint, but you still get a ton of space as well. So this is really the only vehicle in the segment or, or on the market right now that is going to offer you small size with a wagon shape. It just says V60 here in the back. And again, you have another one of these little white badges that let you know it's a Polestar engineered. You don't get anything crazy uh, in terms of exhaust clips down, uh, uh, tips down here. Volvo is very subtle, even on their performance division, which is why some of the choices here are a little bit interesting. Before we go ahead and talk about anything on the interior, I want to show you something really unique here that you can't really see unless I go ahead and pop the hood. And that is going to be that this car actually rides on Olin's dampers. Now, if you're any kind of racing nut, you go to the track, you know that Olin's are like some of the best, most expensive dampers you can get. And in a lot of luxury cars, you just have drive modes, right? Comfort, normal, sport. And when you do that, the dampers get softer or the dampers get firmer, you know, with the push of a button. Not on the V60 Polestar. This might be a luxury station wagon, but these are actually manually adjustable dampers. So you turn 
these little gold knobs under here in the hood. And these only adjust the front dampers left and right. If you want to adjust the rears, you're going to have to get your hands dirty, stick your hands in here. There's another one of those little dials all the way in there. I don't really feel like getting my hands dirty for the video, but that's how you adjust the suspension on a V60 Polestar, which I just think is crazy. Now, I'm actually going to start the interior tour here at the back because that's why you're buying a station wagon, right? Is for the storage capacity. I mentioned that this is a compact wagon. You still get a little under 23 cubic feet of storage in here, a little over 60 cubic feet if you fold down the seats, which unfortunately you are going to have to come all the way over here. You pull this button, it's actually going to drop down both of the headrests, which you can also do from the main touchscreen, which is kind of cool. And as you can see, really roomy amount of space here. You're not getting this on any sedan uh, in this size level. So that is something that's really advantageous about getting the station wagon. Now here in the back seat, again, because of the compact size, we're not getting a ton of leg room back here, but decent fit, no problems at all for me. You do have some uh, nice cargo nets right here. A little bit uncomfortable here in the middle seat because of this large hump that's in the middle. I do at least get heated seats. I also have two USB-C ports, which is quite nice as well. I've also got my nice leather wrapped armrest and I've got some cup holders that pop out as well. Now hopping in the front seat, we're going to see a little bit more of the sporty characteristics of the V60 Polestar engineered. You're gonna get different seats than you would otherwise get on a Volvo. So no massage seats. You don't even get ventilated seats as well, only heated. You don't have the perforations here, but this seat has more bolstering than you would get in, in a Volvo. You have cloth here, but most of the seat center is leather. The cloth is to help, uh, you know, kind of the outsides, which take a lot of wear and tear to just make it a little bit more uh, durable. These seats are extremely extremely comfortable despite being sport seats and they also look gorgeous as well you get these gold seat belts that are going to match uh, the brake calipers and some other things and of course i love the little swedish flag touch that you get here on the seats now volvo has not changed this cabin much since the v60 was engineered in uh, fact it really remains the same you have your weird twist to start instead of a normal start button you've got the same nine inch touch screen here now last year they did add google to this so you can ask it hey google and it'll tell you all sorts of stuff you have google maps as well so they are very quick I do like the Google integration on this car. The menus are a little bit simplified as well. I find that it is easier to find certain things on this car. You get your simple uh, home button here just to go back to this main screen. The only thing is though, it does start to feel dated in some places. The Google software is really nice, but as you can see, that backup camera has like this weird fisheye thing going on. It's like a weird uh, resolution. The 360 degree camera, which is standard, isn't that much better. You can really see the lines between them. When it moves around, it looks very warped and weird. So not a huge fan of those. I mean, they get the job done. It just definitely feels old now that we're talking about, um, you know, a very expensive vehicle, which this is. They've changed up the gauge cluster a little bit since this car was first introduced. Um, you have your power charge gauge, which works similarly as it does in other hybrids. You have your speedometer over there. You can click a button here on the center to pull up your uh, trip computer. And if you push another button, you can pull up your Google map, but that is it. You cannot have your radio stations. You can't have like your fuel economy information always up there kind of basic on here. I really wish that there would be more customization here. One thing that I do really like is that you'll notice as your power charge gauge moves, you have this little oil drop right here. So basically you put your foot down, this starts to move almost like a tachometer. And if you give it too much throttle and you pass that little point of oil, it lets you know that's where it's gonna kick in the gasoline engine. So it's very easy, even when you're on hybrid mode, to keep it in electric mode all the time and not activate the gas engine, which is really nice. Speaking of activating the gas mo engine, I've got to talk to you about all of these different drive modes. Hybrid mode is going to be your default. It's going to mostly use your battery, but as I mentioned, it can activate the uh, gasoline engine in instances where you need more acceleration. Polestar is going to prioritize the engine to give you better performance. As you can see, it's going to change into a normal tachometer when you put it into Polestar mode. 
And then you also have a pure mode, which is going to keep it on electric as m all the time, um, unless I think you go full throttle. Um, and it's only going to do that when you make sure you have a charge. Speaking of which, you can either uh, use the, the charge, you can hold it at the position, or you can charge it up using uh, the gasoline engine, which is kind of interesting. The only thing else you can turn creep on and off, which I don't think I've ever seen in a non EV, which is kind of interesting. And you can change up the steering feel as well. One other small thing that they changed in this cabin from when this car originally designed is the shifter. It's the same shifter design right here. It's actually a crystal that lights up at night from Aura Force, which is a Swedish company, but they changed up the way that you use it. You use used to have to like if you're in park right now you'd have to push it and that would put you in neutral and then push it again to put it in the drive and then to go from drive to reverse you'd have to go up up like that but now it can all be done in just one motion um because they added like a little detent in here so that's how you would get into neutral just by moving it a little bit pushing it more gets you into drive so now you can quickly go from drive to reverse or from reverse to drive and then back into park. It used to be a total pain in the butt to use this shifter. So I'm glad Volvo listened to feedback on that and actually changed. Other than that, we do pretty much have all of the options aside from massage sheets that you can really get in a Volvo. You've got a panoramic roof and you've got the Bowers and Wilkins audio system standard on the Polestar engineered. This is one of the best audio systems that I have ever tested in a vehicle. One of the reasons why is because it has different modes here. You can make it sound like a jazz club or a concert hall, which I know was actually, uh, the audio was modeled after the Gothenburg um, uh, concert hall, which is in Sweden. And it adds like this echo and this reverb to whatever music you're listening to. It sounds gorgeous. Pop in a little bit of Broadway to get that little echo. Even like um, emo rock, which I like to listen to, like Green Day, it just adds this little reverb to it. It sounds fantastic. I've driven hundred and even $200,000 cars that have stereos that don't sound quite as good as the Bowers and Wilkins. Um, so I'm really glad that Volvo included that here. All right, so now let's get underway in the Volvo V60 Polestar Engineered, a car that I have been dying to try for years now. I've driven a regular V60. I've even driven the XC60 Polestar Engineered, which is pretty much the same vehicle, but in SUV form. But now I'm finally getting to try the quickest, most performance focused wagon that Volvo currently sells. And let's talk about the Polestar part because it is a really interesting story. Obviously, Polestar started out as Volvo's performance division, you know, similar to M or AMG. Then they spun off to their own company, which currently sells the Polestar 2 and will eventually sell the Polestar 3 and 4. But they still do these Polestar engineered versions of the Volvo cars, which is kind of interesting. So the powertrain is Volvo's T8. So that's what they call their plug-in hybrid at the moment. The eight really doesn't mean anything anymore. I believe that the initial point was, is that like a T5 is supposed to replace a five cylinder engine. A T6 is supposed to replace a six and a T8 because it has so much power is technically a replacement for Volvo's old V8 engines. So we've got a two liter, turbocharged four-cylinder under the hood. So a lot of power, but only from a four-cylinder engine. When this car first came out, it was a twin-charged engine. That means it was turbocharged and supercharged. So the last time I drove an XC60 Polestar engineered, it still had that twin-charged engine. No more twin-charged, you're only getting a turbocharged engine, but it still produces a healthy 312 horsepower on its own but it's not alone. It has an electric motor as well that produces 143 horsepower. So right now I'm driving the car on electric power alone. And if I put my foot down, it moves, you know, pretty quietly, but only 143 horsepower. So it's really not that quick. If you want the max performance, you're gonna have to put it back into hybrid mode or they have a Polestar mode. So as I showed you earlier in the video, when you put it into Polestar mode, it's going to change from your power charge gauge to a normal tachometer. So you can see where the engine is revving. The thought behind that is, 
you usually don't care whether like how hard, high the RPMs are going. So you really don't need the tachometer, but in Polestar mode, it's gonna prioritize the engine instead of just the electric motors to give you the maximum performance. When the engine and the electric motors are working in concert, you'll get 455 horsepower and a whopping 523 pound-feet of torque. Those are great numbers going out through an eight-speed automatic transmission. When I first drove uh, the XC60 Polestar, and back when this car first came out, it only made 415 horsepower and 494 pound-feet of torque. So really nice bump in both of those categories. Performance, pretty darn good. Let's come to a stop right now. I don't think this has launch control, um, so we're just gonna brake torque it and see what we get. Oof. Pretty drama-free acceleration there. Just real, real torquey motor, thanks to thanks to the electric motor. Uh, all the torque on this four-cylinder is produced very low as well. You do start to feel the acceleration kind of trail off at the top. This car does not need a lot of revs. It's very immediate on the, on the power, very quick on the downshifts as well, but it's not a rever. I think this turbocharged only engine sounds a little bit better than the old twin chart engine. That made some kind of weird noises. This on the other hand, I'm not gonna go ahead and say it's an amazing noise, but it's, you know, kind of low, kind of growly, not, not terrible for a four cylinder. It's definitely not the type of obnoxious performance of, of rah, bah, 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 bah. That's something that you would get from like a BMW M3 or, or a Mercedes C43 even, which is also a four cylinder turbo engine. It's a very quiet and dignified performance. Zero to 60 in 4.4 seconds is good. <laughs> like I said, for a little bit more money, you could get an M3 that will absolutely smoke this. You could get a Tesla Model 3 Performance, which is all electric. Again, we'll run circles around this in terms of a straight line. Uh, there, there's plenty of quicker cars out there. So this is for the type of driver that likes to have something quick, but not something loud, not something obnoxious, not something that you're going to be doing launch controls at every red light to, you know, to scare all of your passengers. It's a reasonable amount of performance. And I, I think that's just fine. And the other part of this that's really Really nice on this equation is that you do get an 18.8 kilowatt hour battery. So that is a lot larger than what used to be on this car. Um, the last time I reviewed the XC60, it only had an 11.6 kilowatt hour battery. So that is significantly smaller and that is really gonna have a good effect on range. So you used to only be able to get about 22 miles out of a charge on one of this. Now you'll get 40 miles, which is really nice. So if I go ahead and put it back into my hybrid setting here, it's going to pretty much default to using the electric motor. So only 134 horsepower, but in the charge gauge, I have that little oil logo. So if I know if I put my foot a little too hard down on the throttle and pass that, it'll kick on the engine and give me all the acceleration I need. But 40 miles of electric only range is great. If you work 20 miles away from where you live, you can do your whole commute, charge up, do it all again under electric power, and then have your gasoline ready for a fun drive or just for the weekends if you're taking a longer trip. All right, so that was the 2024 Volvo V60 Polestar Engineered, one of the last performance wagons that you can still get in America. Let's talk about the pricing. It's just over $71,000. No tax credits or anything like that are going to apply to this kind of uncomparable. There's nothing I can really compare this to. I mean, I guess you could get a BMW M3, but any other fast performance wagon like the Mercedes E63 or the Audi RS6, they're going to be well over $100,000, so significantly more expensive than this. If you absolutely love everything that I told you about this car, but you're just not willing to drive a station wagon and you'd rather have an SUV, I don't know why the wagon is what I think you should get, but you can spend about 75 grand and you can get the XC60 Polestar engineered gives you pretty much everything that you just saw here. You can actually get bigger 20 or even 21 inch wheels on that. But other than that, it's exactly the same package, just in an SUV format. But honestly, I think you would be much cooler in the station wagon. You are just not going to see another one of these wherever you go. I really hope you've enjoyed this look at the 2024 Volvo V60 Polestar Engineered. For more videos like it, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to be alerted of our latest videos. I'll see you next time.